Hi everyone, how's it going? Good, good. Uh, thank you David for sharing. I, I met David a couple days ago. Very interesting. He lives in a small town of about 3,000 people in southern Ontario. And it's the same town that my parents and sister live in. Um, I wish I knew someone who could figure out the probability of that. But I probably just had a lot. Um, if I told you that I was a stats teacher... Would it surprise you to learn that I taught seventh grade? Yes. Yeah. Is that is, is there a preconception a little bit sometimes that stats is the class, and at my school in particular, it's a class that seniors take when they're maybe not ready or interested in calculus. I think it gets a little bit of a bad rap. I teach seventh grade pre-algebra. I consider myself a stats teacher. And I think that all middle school teachers are stats teachers because there are stats standards all throughout middle schools. And so um, the session that Hedge and I are going to run at 4 o'clock is called Statistics and Probability for the Terrified Middle School Math Teacher because some of those standards are pretty new. And I don't know about a lot of you all, but I wasn't really prepared with a background in stats. I did the sort of algebra, geometry, calculus gauntlet um, when I was going through school. Not just high school, but that was sort of the gauntlet I ran in college as well. So. Um, my thinking has changed a lot about this over the past 12 to 24 months, and I'm really grateful to the Mythos community. I've learned a lot, but two people in particular that have really influenced my thinking, and the first one is uh, this guy. Uh, does anybody know Seth Jones? Anybody in here? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I knew Lonnie did. Um, I, I, he's not hugely active on Twitter, and he doesn't have a huge Twitter presence, so I really think we should tweet bomb him right now. Um, it's Ryan Seth Jones, and if you will tweet at him with the hashtag TMC and tell him Joel sent you, follow him if you want to. Um, he, he and I have done a lot of work together um, through, he's now at MTSU back in Middle Tennessee where I'm from, and you're right now. Um, Back, uh, in, I'm in Middle Tennessee, and he's back there. Uh, he was at Vanderbilt for a while as well. Um, and we've developed a lot uh, of stuff together. He's worth a follow, and I think it'd be fun to tweet on. So thank you for indulging me that. Uh, the other person might be even less well-known, very shy and retiring figure in the Mitboss community. <laughs> um, not very, not very well-known, and that is uh, Hedge. And I'm very grateful to both Seth and Hedge in sort of helping me form my own thoughts around teaching um, statistics in the middle school and the importance of it and ways to do it. Um, as well as other members of uh, the Mitboss community. So thank you to them and thank you to you all. So if you'll indulge me for a couple minutes, I just want to show you a couple of things that I do uh, in middle school, seventh grade pre-algebra, to get kids thinking about stats. Uh, and I'm going to show you some technology. Annie Fetter reminded us on uh, Wednesday at the Desmo session that technology doesn't make the thinking, but it can help the thinking. So just want to show you a couple of things. Um, Tinkerplots is the software I'm going to show, but I'm going to actually show something that might be better, but I'm really just not familiar with enough with it um, at that point. So, um, here we go. So, those of you who are at the Des, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Those of you who are at the Desmo session, does this look familiar? Yeah. Uh, the, if you did one of the scavenger hunts uh, at the Desmo uh, session, they, they gave you this uh, set of data on Lego sets, and they had you copy columns B and C, pieces and price, uh, number of pieces versus the price, and you put it on a graph, and uh, you copy paste it into a table, and it graphs it, and you find the regression and everything. I'm going to use that same data, um, and I purposely didn't set this up ahead of time, because I want you to see it's really easy. So this is the software Tinkerplots. If you come to our session at 4 o'clock, you'll get to play with this if that interests you. Um, and uh, we have a number of licenses that we can uh, give. We, have some, we brought some licenses with us. So um, if you brought a laptop, uh, you can get this installed and we'll give you a license right there and you can play with your own copy. Um, so I'm going to drag the cards out and I'm going to paste uh, the cases in. And so you can see right here it brought all 56 cases in. Uh, sometimes it brings in the column headings and sometimes it doesn't, but it's pretty easy to, to change here. So I'm just going to change that to name. I'm just going to change that to number of pieces. I'm just going to change that to price. And so I've got 56 cards in my set. 
all the different uh, Lego cases from the, the Desmos uh, people. Um, so now I'm going to drag a plot down, and right now this is a very generic plot, uh, but I'm going to drag pieces and drop it on the x-axis, and that information is sort of put into a random, not very helpful histogram with really, really weird bin sizes. But if you grab one of the dots and you drag it off to the side, it becomes a dot plot, and you can stack them like so. And so you can ask students, again, the technology is great, what do you notice about this? What do you see? What do you wonder? So what I might do is I might click on the price, and you'll notice that the price is marked green up here, right? So if I click on it, it keeps the number of pieces in the dot plot, but now the darkest green is the highest price, the lightest, the, the whitest are the lowest price. So you can start to compare things this way statistically. Really quickly, you can click on the averages, and it marks the median right here and the mean right here. Why do you think the mean is so much bigger than the median in this case? What do you notice? Is there a reason for that? So it's, it's ways of getting students to talk. What I find when I teach stats, if they're doing it by pencil and paper and calculator, by the time they've cranked through the algorithm and figured out the mean and the median when they're in seventh grade, they're done. Like, like that was, that's, those, are, those are tough things to find sometimes. There's a lot of work. And they're not really interested in the analysis. And they're not really interested in making the meaning behind those statistics. And if you can have activities like this, or uh, uh, software like this, or something, um, it, can really, it can really help. Here's one of my favorite things, um, because uh, MAD is a, a middle school um, standard now. And boy, is it tough to, has anybody tried to make that meaningful for their sixth and seventh graders? <laughs> Woo! Huh? So, um, meaningful and understandable and everything, right? That's a tough, that's a tough sell. So watch closely, we bring this, uh, yeah, sorry, Matt, mean absolute deviation, right? So it's sort of a precursor to standard deviation, um, uh, a, measure of, a measure of variability, right? So you can put this ruler up here, and I'm going to put this here on the mean, and I'm going to put it on the first case. So I've, got, I've highlighted the first case in the, in the data set, and I've highlighted the mean. I'm going to go down here, I'm going to find the absolute difference, and watch carefully, I'm going to find the mean of differences. Watch the animation that happens here. And one thing that I heard Seth say to a room full of teachers was, and so we can see down here, the, the mat is 231 for this data set. It cranked it out. Just watching the animation, do you think the students might get a grasp of what mat actually is doing? <laughs> right? More so than like on a table or on a... A, a, on a sheet of paper, like just the way that it counted it off from the mean with the, the, on the negative side and then on the positive side for the difference, um, is very, uh, very interesting. So what we're going to do in our session, we're going to do some activities where we can introduce you to tinker plots a little bit. You get your hands sort of dirty in it and, and mess around with it. And you can see if it's something that you might want to use. It's aimed at middle school because we think there's a gap in middle school and statistics resources. But if you're a high school teacher and you just want to try it out, you're welcome to come, of course. What I want to show everyone is a resource that's really new to me. Has anybody heard of CodeApp before? Okay, so this is really, really sweet. Um, I, if I could, they're, they're trying to be the free online version of kind of like Tinkerplots, kind of like Fathom, sort of like Desmos for statistics. Um, and so if you want to check out the, uh, the web address, it's codeapp, C-O-D-A-P dot concord dot org. Really, really interesting stuff. Just to show you an idea of what it can do. Uh, the reason I don't use this yet is because it's really new and it's really newer to me even. Uh, but they've got, some, uh, they've got uh, some sample data sets. And if there are latitude and longitude in your data set, you can actually drag it onto a map and put some endpoints. Um, so here, there's, uh, there's the depth that they're diving at. I'm going to drive that down here into the, uh, the x-axis, and it's going to stack it. And then, so this is an elephant seal. This is four elephant seals that were, that were tagged, and you can see the depth they're diving at. And then you go ahead and click on one of the names of the elephant seals, and it shows you their particular path. It shows you um, their particular depth they were diving at. And you can bring in your own information here, map my run, or, or a, a bike. And so I, I can imagine students getting really, really engaged in their own data and being able to, to analyze it. And this is free, and uh, I plan on seeing if this is going to be an adequate replacement for Tinkerplots. Uh, 
in my classroom and in my practice as time goes on. So, uh, hope something in intrigued you there, and uh, thanks for your time.